Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of 2024. So it was sometime in the month of November that I got the confirmation that I will be one of the team members of Chessbase India who will be traveling to Uzbekistan to cover one of the biggest tournaments of the year, the FIDE World Rapid and Blitz. So on the 24th of December, we started from Delhi and it was on the day of Christmas that we reached Tashkent. We took a cab to reach Samarkand and we had to cover a distance of more than 300 kilometers and we did it within a matter of 4 to 5 hours. As we were nearing the borders of Samarkand, the sun was starting to rise and the beautiful city of Samarkand was slowly waking up from sleep. We reached our destination, the Silk Road Samarkand. In the evening, I sneaked out some time and visited the Eternal City which was uh, really close to our hotel. So after five days of intense coverage, we went to visit our first destination, the Registan Square. Apart from the enchanting beauty of the monument, the work and the craftsmanship can be compared with some of the best works in the world. A total of three matrashas combined to make the Registan Square and each one is unique in its own way. So the next day I had to leave early for Tashkent and I was really excited because it was a train journey uh, an approximate 4 hour train journey from Samarkand to Tashkent. So to tell you the truth, trains are one of my favorite modes of transportation and this was the first time I was going to board a train in a foreign country. A quick note, if you are planning to travel by train, make sure you book way in advance as most of the times the tickets are booked. I got my seat in the second class compartment and to my luck, I met these two charming Kazakh ladies who were heading back home after a short trip in Samarkand. I did not realize when the four hours had passed away as, as we had chatted away in the entire journey. While I make my way to the hotel, I should also add that I visited Kazakhstan a few, a few months ago. I visited Astana. And there's some similarity between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan that the people are extra nice. I have met some of the amazing people in these two countries in Astana and Samarkand and Tashkent. 
So make sure that you talk to them and you enjoy their experience. After checking in my hotel and finishing up some work, I went for a short walk and visited the Museum of Applied Arts, which was near to my hotel. The place is a must visit if you are visiting Tashkent. Now, let me tell you how I planned things. I planned it horribly wrong. So I, I, I was in my hotel, I was going through places to visit in Tashkent because I did not plan to visit Tashkent. This was a sudden plan because I was uh, supposed to be in, in Samarkand. So I checked some of the places that I could visit. I took scenic shots and when I went out, I had no internet. Mm, I knew that this place, this uh, uh, museum is near to my hotel and I asked some people and went there. So once I finished my uh, visit to the museum, I was standing in a bus stop and I was thinking, how should I go to my next stop? And I had no idea. And in Tashkent, it's very difficult to identify a cab. And I was there on the 1st of January where almost everything was closed. A very special thing about Uzbekistan is that unlike many other countries, like my own country, people like to celebrate. Like people like to enjoy, they don't like to earn money, they don't like to do anything else. They close everything and they go out and spend time with their families, which is really, really special thing to see. So it was the 1st of January, I was not getting any cab and I was actually stuck. And I was standing there in a bus stop and uh, there was a lady who was uh, speaking over the phone. And I thought of going and asking her that can she guide me to get a tab, uh, get a cab. And uh, she said that, where do you want to go? So I mentioned that I have some list of places, but I'm not sure how to go by. So what she did was the sweetest thing ever. She told me, and why would you take a cab? Uh, take a metro and take a bus and take a metro and you will reach there and it will cost you much less money. I was like, okay, that is fantastic, but I have no idea how to go there. She said, no worries, come with me. So she made me board the bus, book a ticket, and then we went to the metro station. Once we were in the metro station, she showed me around how the metro station works, how the um, how to buy the ticket, how to enter the metro station, how to follow the, met uh, the railway stations and how to return. So I did not even use internet for the whole day and I was not lost and I came back in, in the absolute way that she mentioned. So that's how it went and she said goodbye to me in the platform and uh, that was a sweet moment that we had spent for 20 minutes. It was really special for me as a, as a stranger to be helped like this and I could visit the place and I am really thankful to the lady. So I went to my next destination which was Chorso Bazaar. After I had spent some time in, in the Chorso Bazaar, uh, there was a very beautiful mosque just nearby. I 
it was also not in my list to visit but as it was in the area i did not want to miss it and there was also a beautiful madrasa which you can check out in the video So these are the places I had visited in uh, Tashkent for the little time that I had. It was already getting evening and I had some pending work so I had to head back to the hotel and uh, I reached the metro station where I started from. So once I was in the metro station, I went out and I could not understand how do I went back to my hotel because I do not remember from where I had taken the bus and how I had reached the metro station so I was waiting uh, at a junction. to somehow get a cab and i just could not and i was struggling and suddenly i saw two ladies with a small kid passing by they were maybe going for an evening stroll and they stopped and uh, i saw i overheard somebody saying that he must be in trouble and they went by and i was still searching i was looking here and there and i was i could still could not find a cab and then uh, something happened i heard the lady i heard a voice that uh, can i help you in some way so i saw that the same ladies they came uh, and asked me if i had some problems and uh, if they can help so i was like yes i am unable to go to go back to my hotel and uh, what should i do how should i do it so she was like okay it's difficult to get it here let me book a cab for you I was like that would be great uh, thank you so much so she booked a cab not only did she book the cab she called the driver mentioned where i was and mentioned where my hotel is so that i do not face any problem because in uzbekistan and also in kazakhstan is which i followed many people can speak english good english but um, there are many people who can also not speak because they are fluent in uzbek or kazakh language or russian but not english but they can understand some language So she made sure that I get the cab, and she also was like, uh, "Let me stay, wait here and uh, let me let the cab come, then I leave." And I was like, "No, you have been kind enough, and I can. I am already burdened with your kindness, so please carry on. I am sure that I will go." And that was such a nice uh, thing to do. And I got my cab, and I was as I was heading back, I was thinking of all these people who helped me. while i was there i had no internet for the day and i did not get lost i i had a very pleasant visit though i was i i got very less time but mm, these are some of the amazing places that i have seen one big regret i have that i could not visit samarkand in detail and tashkent in detail and the second uh, regret i have is that i could not taste the local food I just missed that because in Samarkand the place where we were it was very far away from the city and as i mentioned on the 31st everything was closed everything they all spent time with their families and it was super good but it was a little sad for me because i could not taste the local food like i wanted to taste the pulao i i had tasted some of the uh, say samsa and some other stuff but not the pulao the famous pulao and on the 1st of january when i was in Tashkent everything was closed like every hotel every restaurant was closed i had to eat kfc in uh, for dinner which was a really sad thing so that was my experience and uh, i came back home uh, as a very happy person because uh, it was not about uh, how well how big the buildings are or how fast the cars are or how clean the roads are because i have seen the, those things and those things don't impress me as much as people as much as tradition as much as culture as much as history and this country was fully packed with it so it is my definite recommendation to mm, visit these two beautiful countries uzbekistan kazakhstan whenever you can and uh, i have mentioned these places so uh, i will write, um, share all the details in the description If there is anything else that you want me to share, uh, any other extra details, I would love to do it. So that's it. Uh, it's already a very long video. I hope you enjoyed it. If there is anything else uh, you want to know, please let me know in the comments. And if you have visited Uzbekistan, do let me know if there are interesting things to uh, other interesting things to do or see. Uh, I'm sure there are. Uh, so I will be happy to read your comments. So that's it for this video. See you in the next video.